Hey everyone, this is Major Batman at Link Gear Studios here to go over a Unity XR tutorial on how to utilize the new Unity input action systems by creating a VR wrist menu. Let's get started. So once the project's loaded, the first thing to do is we need to install the new input system. Go to Package Managers. And if it doesn't show, we want to go to the Unity Registry. Click on Input System and click Install. Once you're back, you'll want to scroll down and most likely you won't see the XR Interaction Toolkit. And in the new version, it has been changed location. So let's go to Advanced Project Settings. And in the new menu, click Enable Preview Package. Click I Understand. Exit out of there, and now we see the preview packages. What we want to download is the XR Interaction Toolkit. By default, it shows the point 10 preview 7. What we want is to go down and see other versions. Let's install 1.0 preview 3. Once that's finished, click on Samples, and we also need to install the default input actions. Next up, we want to go into our Edit and go to Project Settings. Go to XR Plugin Management and install XR Plugin Management. I'm utilizing the Oculus Quest 2, and I haven't tried it without, the, without, but I believe in order to get the Oculus Link to work, we must click this button. With that out of the way, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a plane for us to play with. Next, we want to create an XR rig. So if you've taken tutorials in the past, there's a device base, which is what it used to be, and now we're moved to the action based systems. So let's pick an room scale XR rig. So when we click through, the left hand and the right hand has these action based controllers, but it doesn't know what to do. It's not really doing anything. So, how do we do that? In the XR, action, in XR interaction toolkit, the default input actions are here, the left controller and the right controller. What we want to do is click the left controller and add to action base controller default. We want to do the same for the right controller. Now what this does is this adds, adds the default actions for the XR toolkit to the specific controller so that the left stick does certain things, the right a button does certain things, the right trigger, etc. But if we create a new XR Interaction Toolkit, it's not going to tie to it. And that's because we're missing a, a preset. So open the Project Settings again and go to Preset Manager. And for the right controller, we want it to look for the right controller. And for the left, let's look for the left. So let's delete this and let's try that one more time. If we look at the left hand, we now have the left hand actions for all the various buttons, as well as the right hand buttons. On the XR Interaction Toolkit, we want to add the Input Action Manager. And we want to add the default input actions. Next, we want to import the hands, hand models. And we can do this easily. Okay, I've added the left and right hand skeletal low res. These are our hands that we can utilize. So to add the model, you go to the left hand controller and you just take this and drag it there. And we do the same for the right hand. What we're going to do is we're going to create two transforms on these controllers to adjust the orientation of the hand so that they more readily match the default position of your hands when you're holding the controller. So for the left hand transform, what we want to do is we want to adjust the trans transform on the Z to 90.
for the right hand transform we want to adjust this to minus 90. So what we failed to do was actually apply these transforms. So let's move this transform over. So you just take this and move it here. So let's try this one more time. And now they seem to be set up correctly. However, we can't move, so let's fix that. So go back to the XR rig, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a locomotion system. And drag the XR rig to the XR rig. Next, we're going to add a continuous move provider. And we want to make it an action-based continuous move provider. We're going to drag the XR rig as well to the system. So the continuous move provider is something that allows you to move around using a joystick in like normal 3D games. So you can adjust the speed. You can see if gravity affects you. But what we're interested in is how do we make this work? So if we click use reference here, we now need a input action reference. And when we click here, we can decide which one. Left hand move, I believe, fits what we want. So let's add a or snap turn provider, action base. Again, we need to add the XR rig at, to the locomotion system. You can adjust the turn amount. By default, it's 45 degrees. And we want to attach this to the right joystick. Select the right hand turn. So let's test this out. So if I use the left joystick, I should move around, which you can see. And if I use the right joystick, I spin. And these can be used in tandem while you're moving. Not bad for a few minutes worth of work. So, so far we have a moving, moving rig that responds to our joystick movements. I want to show you how to get this to work with your own functions, your own methods to figure out what you want to do. So I've created an idea to create a wrist UI. So let's do this. On the left hand controller, we're going to add the XR UI canvas. We're going to, it's already default to world space, but we want to change the scale to 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. This allows it to be closer to the scale of our hand. Good. What we're going to add here, we're going to add two buttons. And the button's a bit too big. So let's adjust the button to something more manageable, maybe 35 by 50. Let's, let's change this to exit game. It looks like we need to adjust the font size a little bit. Let's duplicate this button and make it a little higher. And let's have this do something like return to menu. So the idea here is we can we have a wrist menu that allows you to pop up and do game specific items too. So let's create that script. So we're going to create a new C -sharp script and we're going to call it the wrist menu. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the new Unity engine dot input system. Okay. So what we want this to do is it dis when we press the menu button on the left controller, it opens the menu. And then when we click a specific button, it does what we want, what we want it to do. So let's do that now. First, we want to add the wrist UI that's going to be displayed. Next, we want to add a Boolean that that keeps track whether or not it's active or not. Okay, on the start, we want it to do a, do the proper display. So we're setting it, the active component to true to begin with, but then what we want it to do is to disable it. So let's create a function called display wrist UI. So let's make this public. And we 
want it to do is, if the first UI is active, set it to inactive, and if it already is inactive, set it to true. we have is a script that will display the wrist UI, will hide the wrist UI on initial start, but we want a way to call this again. Now in most normal ways we would just select this as a button. Unfortunately you can't do that in the new input system. What you have to do is create a, a wrapper for it. So let's create that wrapper. We'll first start off by creating a public void called menu pressed. And we're going to call in a, a con callback context from input action. Action dot callback context. And we'll name that context. This callback context allows the code to tie to the player actions. If the context is performed, then we want to do something. And in this case, we want to, to call our wrist UI function. And that is it. That creates the wrapper. And so now we're able to tie in the input system and call any function we want using a few lines of code. Next, I'll create the code to actually run each of the buttons. Let me get that started. So now that we have the wrist menu script written, let's attach it. We're going to attach it to the left hand, but we could really attach it anywhere. I think it makes sense here since it's on the left wrist. So then we want to capture the wrist UI, and that's this canvas here. It defaults to active. Okay, so then we want to attach the buttons to actually do things. So let's do the exit button. And I want you to note how Unity does this because that's the same way we're going to do the player input. So the exit button, we click plus here. We're going to add the left hand controller and we're going to call the wrist menu exit game. We're going to click on the menu button, hit the plus sign, drag the left hand controller over, call the wrist menu that's attached to it and do not display wrist but return to menu. And that's what we'll need to do. So if we run this, these buttons will allow us to do stuff, but by default, once the, once the script is run, the menu will disappear. And what we want to do is to be able to call that menu back. Let's go back to the XR rig, and let's add a player input. So it requires an action asset. So we created player controls, so we could bring that over. And we want a default, we want the map of default being the UI. And what we want it to do is instead of send messages as the default behavior, we want to change it to invoke unity events. We open this up and then within UI, we get a callback context for the menu. So what is the callback menu, callback context function we want to run and that's within our wrist UI so let's bring our left hand controller over and let's add so we could do display wrist UI but it doesn't work instead because we have the dynamic callback context performed we have this menu pressed up here and that's the one we want to select and select that One thing of note is when we go back to the one thing to note is if we open up our player controls, I've also added the start on the left hand Oculus touch controller. And you can find that using by following these directions.
or you can pick the left hand and start. Now the reason I did that is I've run into issues with it using the menu and maybe it's not the right button. Maybe it's home. Maybe it's the menu button instead. Or maybe it's just the start. So I haven't exactly, no, I'm going to figure that out. Stop. Okay, one thing of note is that the player controllers, I run into, I run into a small issue and I wanna make sure it gets uh, clarified and so that we can make sure it works. In the player controls, I had to make it look like this. The menu button for the left hand XR controller as well as the start for the Oculus Touch controller. And for some reason, this allowed them to map. And I believe it's supposed to work organically, but for whatever reason, I needed to include both in order for it to work for me. And so that is it. Let's test it out. And you can see we have two hands. We can move back and forth. We can move left and right, back and around. We can rotate. And let's see if this menu works. If by pressing the menu button, we now get a rest menu. And it disappears open shut and now we can go and we can say exit the game or return to menu and that changes the scene back to normal and there we have it we have how to use the new input action system in unity XR with a wrist menu that can be called using the callback context I hope you enjoyed this tutorial again I'm major Batman link here studios have a great day.